Everyone, please find your way to your seats and silence your cell phones. Welcome back to Hive Mind Unlimited. Now, you may be looking at us and thinking, these guys look like movie stars. But today we're doing our best to think like the critics. For today's game, we're gonna hear a movie title and try and guess its score on Rotten Tomatoes. Closest to that score gets a point, and if you get it spot on, you get two. And lucky for you, the previews are short today. We've got Patreon and Cameo linked in description. We got merch available on our website. Now let's get straight into the movie. Shushing! Grant, what's the first movie? The Shining. Whoa, what a good one. Who directed The Shining? Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> Great movie, very long, takes place in a hotel. Haunted Hotel, yes. Haunted Hotel. I actually just watched a YouTube video. I think Danny Gonzalez went to the hotel oh, that nice. they filmed The Shining at. Everybody has like paranormal experiences there. So he went there as like plain unbiased, like let's see if anything happens. I'm not here looking for ghosts. I'm not here to try to make an entertaining video that is jump scares with ghosts and creepy music. I'm trying to just go here and see if anything happens. And he said he felt weird, but nothing happened. Ah. Sorry to spoil the video for <laughs> you, but yeah. All work and no play makes great in a dull boy. Three, two, one. 93? Come on. 93? 89%. It is 82%. Wow, what the heck? I'm so confused, you know? <laughs> they say this is one of the best movies of all time. Everybody loves it. Yeah. Like, do people have... What are their gripes? Well, what's the audience score? I bet you it's about a 95. It's 93. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is just what I did last time. Yeah, you're- I got a real gauge on the people. Yeah. Right? I don't like these snooty, oh, oh, oh the hoity-toity snoots walking around the mu movie museum, pointing at the painting and whatever. I don't like all this shit. See, but I'm taking that logic too, and now just spin it. Go where you think the audience is, and then think, what would people be pissed about if mm. the critics gave it? To me, that's a 90 up, obviously, 90% up. But right. I, put, I went with 89, mm -hmm. because I figured the critics think it's maybe it's a little too long. Maybe it's a poor adaptation of the book. Oh, there's a book. It's uh, Stephen King. Stephen King wrote the book. Stanley <laughs> Kubrick made the movie. And then Danny Gonzalez made the YouTube video. And Danny Glover's in it too. Wow. Small world, man. Grant, what's the next movie? Rush Hour 2. Woo, heater alert. <laughs> Great little like mini board game, Rush Hour. Really? You ever you play that game? Where you get the car out of the parking lot? Yeah, it's like the, yeah. yeah. It's, it's the little car puzzle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My brain just loves shit like that. D anyway, back to the movie. This is Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Facts. And they're in Rush Hour 2 as well, right? I know they're in Rush Hour, the original, but did they switch anything up? Oh, three. They did three of them. It's a trilogy. I be it might even go to four. They might have four. They might have four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is classic buddy cop comedy, high grossing series of films, never really tickled my chords. No, it's just always on TV. Yeah. Like it's a pretty safe bet that on any given TV, you can watch Ridiculousness or Rush Hour. Yeah. <laughs> like it's gonna be on. Three, two, one. 38? 44%? It's 51%. You skewed it too hard. Yeah. <laughs> you, know. you thought people loved it, but the critics, they'll never like a buddy cop movie, not since Lethal Weapon. Uh, audience is 59. Audience is 74. I was gonna oh say my 70. gosh, really? The thermometer just, <laughs> <laughs> it escapes me, you know? I'm fine with a calculator, a, a turkey baster, a lot of other little <laughs> instruments. I can figure them out, but yeah. the thermometer, it eludes me. That's how I got kicked out of my second house with my second dad. Really? Yeah, I was touching the thermometer all the time. <laughs> Quit fucking touching my thermometer. <laughs> you, you don't pay utilities in this bitch. Yeah. Bitch. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he's, he's super verbally abusive. Grant, what's the third movie? The Simpsons movie. Oh, film on film right here. It's like big on big. This is one of the best movies of all time. Mm -hmm. I think it's in my top five and I'm not joking. <laughs> like uh, of every movie I've ever seen. And I haven't even watched that much of The Simpsons, yeah. but I saw The Simpsons movie in theaters Same. for whatever reason. Something about the marketing, it just hit right. Yeah. Spider Pig. Spider Pig was big. Yeah. <laughs> Spider Pig yeah. was a huge ball. <laughs> it was the first movie with a jingle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Spider pig, spider pig, does whatever a spider pig does. I'm surprised there wasn't a spider pig movie. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, that's a good point. They're not ones for spinoffs though. Think of how long that show has been going on and Krusty, sure Krusty got his own land at Universal. Totally. And that's great and all, but no spinoffs from that show. All those characters. There's a huge spinoff of that show. What? Family Guy. Got pulled over by Peter Parker the other day. Call that a spider pig. <laughs> <laughs> Name's Officer Parker, I um, can license registration, and I just like, I'm doing like one of those know the law videos. Right. And I'm like, what's your badge number? And he's like, sir, can you roll the window all the way down? I'm like, I don't have to do that, officer. Eventually you do reach for your registration, and he's like, get down! <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine a person watching this movie and not just absolutely loving it. Yeah, it just looks so good. It's got that, it's got a feeling to it. Reminds me of Rugrats Go to Paris. That movie captivated me in a similar way as a child. And do you remember the jingle for that one? 
Cross so far that their parents want to find them. But they can't find them. <laughs> 32 1. 81. 74%. It is 87%. Let's nice. go. Trials. 87%. Audience 99. 77%. The critics like it more than the audience. Yes. Actually, I understand that. <laughs> yeah, me I too. understand that. People with taste. I, I'm yeah. back or I'm back on the critics side. <laughs> <laughs> Does Rotten Tomatoes have a union? They should get a union. Well, I'm sure like the majority of the critics are in the in SAG or something. In SAG? Yeah. What's that? The Screen Actors Guild. Screen Actors Guild. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> What's the deal? With it? <laughs> Why? What? You deal? told me to shut up, now you want to know. No, I'm deal. telling them to shut up. Oh, I'm telling them the snooty. Yeah. I'm going back and forth. Uh, I, I don't it. know whether I like these guys or not. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I like the critics and I'm yeah. like, don't. Doesn't really matter. I'm going to bend <laughs> the truth a lot throughout the video. But how do you get in the Screen Actors Guild? Um, Asking for a friend. I think it's any work on a movie. You got to get your union card. Wait, what? If you're in a movie at all, you're automatically in this fancy guild? Not usually for extras, but once you get a speaking part or anything like that, once your name's like on the credits, credits or uh, if you've written or helped produce right you gotta get a union card right and it costs a lot i think dues are like 300 plus a month that's weird i think it's 90 percent of members are unemployed so you're not picking up work you're doing auditions you're shit pissing around you're paying 300 bucks a month next movie please don't worry darling new horror olivia wilde harry styles mm -hmm. not jason sudeikis believe this one got off to a rocking start and has only gone down a lot of drama behind the scenes with this movie. This was the Olivia Wilde, Harry Styles thing. Then Olivia Wilde kind of like let the whole set fall apart because she was too <laughs> focused on Harry Styles, which yeah. I understand that's a hot guy. Yeah. But uh, oh boy, uh, I have some bad news for you. What's that? You know exactly? I know the exact score. Oh, really? Dear friend of ours, Nick is not green, just did a video uh -huh. about the standing ovations yeah. of movies. In that game, this one showed up and had the score on the screen. The Rotten Tomatoes score was given as a part of the clue. Can you tell me above or below 50%? Below. Okay. Don't worry, darling, you have plenty of time to catch up after I take the lead with this one. You're not gonna take the lead. This is insane. I want you to know how insane this is. Okay. Three, two, one. I guess th 38%. That's what I guess. It's 38%. That is crazy. I took a peek and saw that there. I knew the answer. That's, what? <laughs> So we both get two points. Yeah, yeah. four to three, daddy. <laughs> Don't try and out buff the film buff, baby. Cause I'm fucking ripped and the movie theater's my beach. <laughs> Next movie. Grown Ups. Ooh. Grown Ups 1? Yeah. Star-studded cast here. Kevin James, David Spade, Chris Rock, Adam Sandler, Rob Schneider. Don't sleep on Buscemi. Buscemi's in it too. Let us not forget. <laughs> he's not part of the main five, but he might as well be because he steals the show. This movie, as much as I want to like it, I did watch it <laughs> because like we make so many jokes about it and I watched it hoping to be like, this was funnier than I thought, whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's tough. It's like a really bad watch. David Spade, top three punchable faces in Hollywood. <laughs> <It's> not, <laughs> and he is not two and he's not three. I would love to knock his lights out. If there's a video of me just cold cocking David Spade on Hollywood Boulevard, <laughs> I could take my dirt nap. Oh my, oh my, wait. Like permanent damage. Yeah. I want him to get reconstructive surgery on his orbital bone, you know, when I'm through with him. And despite his lousy reputation in Hollywood and with audiences alike, you're gonna punch him so hard that people are still like, that wasn't okay. Yeah. They're gonna take his side. That's the type <laughs> of punch you gotta lay on David yeah. Spade. Like, oh, geez, no one likes him, but. Come on. Is he dead? <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one. I put 39. I put 24%. It is 11%. Wow. <laughs> 39, Riley. Well, I thought it was like a clever little thing that it had more than don't worry, darling. You know what I mean? I guess, yeah. 11. 11%, 11 yeah. That's proper. I'm back on the critic side. That's 11% for grownups is good. What's the audience score? 62%. Yeah. Think Way of all the high. old, boring whites in this country, though. All of the whites. <laughs> All of the whites, all of the whites. Next movie, please. The Truman Show. Mm. The Truman Show, Jim Carrey? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Kind of fodder for any time shit gets really bad politically, people are like, this is just like the Truman Show. Yeah. You know? <laughs> this shit's staged, bro. Donald Trump is the president, bro. This is literally the plot of the Truman Show. <laughs> One of Jim Carrey's performances, I believe, that kind of like toes the line between his like goofy personality and his more serious acting stuff, right? Yeah, it's like a really well-written script in that way where like he, it allows him to do that very effortlessly. And the more he does it, it plays into the character. 
better. You know? mm, okay. Three, two, one. 70? I went 75. It is 95. Wow. Them fuckers love that Truman Show. That's higher than The Shining. It's shorter. <laughs> I mean, that yeah. is the one thing about The Shining. Who has four hours? Ooh, you know what would be interesting? Hmm. I want to know the actor who has the biggest spread of Rotten Tomatoes scores. Like, who's somebody that's done a movie that is like 1% on Rotten Tomatoes and also done one that's like 99? So you're looking for the highest standard deviation amongst actors. Thank God I have somebody who knows arithmetic here. It'd be interesting to know lowest standard deviation and highest, yeah. too, because it'd be good to know someone that's always in whichever realm they're in, if they're stuck in the 30s or if they're always in great movies. Yeah. Then it'd be good to know someone who's been in shit piss and high piss. You know, like the first name that comes to mind is just the guys who have deviated from goofy comedy. So it's like Adam Sandler having uncut gems and punch drunk love. Sure. Versus, you know, Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison. But I think movies like Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison might be highly rated by the critics as well. I don't think so. I feel like the guys that would be in it, that would be really interesting. It's like Robert De Niro. Right. He, he's in like Meet the Fockers and like The Intern. Yeah, and that's like, true. As he's gotten older, his name, even Al Pacino has been in like some shitty like family movies as he's gotten into his 70s and stuff. Vince Vaughn could have a big standard deviation. Uh, he's never really broken into a movie that went all the way there as like a good, well-respected movie. I bet you Swingers is like an 88%. Swingers mm -hmm. is an 88%. Yeah, that movie's great. Anyway, interesting to think about. Right, for sure, for sure. Next one. The Water Boy. <laughs> <laughs> is it called The Water Boy or just Water Boy? The Water Boy. The Water Boy. The Adam Sandler, I always thought it was just called Water Boy. It's like the Ohio State University. <laughs> yeah, the Water Boy. <laughs> Bobby Boucher, this one's one of his one of his kind of stinkers too. I loved it as a kid, but mm -hmm. like, it's not great. I maybe watched last year and yeah, you're, you're right. Three, two, one. 19%. I went with 49%. It's 33%. You were closer. 16 away. Oh my gosh, wait. 33, I am 14, 14 away. away. Yeah, you got it. I got it. Wow. So much for arithmetic, am I right? What's the audience score there? 71%. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> they like that shit. Gatorade. <laughs> what is better? <laughs> Dumb question. Mm -hmm. If you have a non-speaking role in an alien movie, are you an extraterrestrial? It's extra, extra. I think so, but I don't think aliens shoot movies. I mean, even being in a movie, speaking or non-speaking is an alien concept to me, so. I think you'd be a great actor. Do you really think so? Or are you just saying that? I don't remember the last time somebody looked me in the eye and told me just one true thing, one honest thing. Everywhere I go, I see lies and deception. I see right through it. Even if it was an insult, I'd rather have a true, honest insult. Awesome, Riley. If we're interested, we'll give you a call back. Um, thanks for coming in. Should I have cried? I can't say that, but that's Martin fucking Scorsese. And yeah. You think I should have cried? That's Martin fucking Scorsese. I know, no, but no, I, we don't have time for another read. It's not even. Next, it's not about please. the read. It's a, it's just about like I'm trying to get a read on the character. To me, I got solemn and I got mm -hmm. jaded for sure, bitter. But he's too manly for the emotion. I don't know. I mean, if you want me to cry, I can give it a quick cry real quick. We got want. a lot of other people in the waiting room. Um, we got to get to them again. Thanks for coming in. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're looking in a different direction for this role. Really? I mean, yeah. a lot of people out there. I mean. I don't mean to be brash or anything, but they were basically like fugly versions of me. Appreciate the input. We'll give you a call back. If I'm just saying interested. they looked a lot like me, but like not. Yep. They mean you're not going to get this out there. That's all I'm saying. Talk to your agent. Maybe something else will open up in the film. Right. But I just talked. I mean, I yeah. talked to a lot. I, I did a lot of chitter chatter out there. I did not get a lot of charisma out of these dudes. I really think I'm kind of the best you're working with. Again, we really appreciate it. Um, yeah, we'll I'm be on, in touch. I'm going to filibuster. Yeah, I think I'm going to filibuster. So uh, we'll I really, really think you're going to want me in this movie. And honestly, I think this is what the character would do. It's not even really just me as an actor in here being like demanding this role. I'm saying I'm still in character and I think the character would demand the role. A lot of conviction on the character. Yeah. So I think I'm, I'm not going to take no for an answer. This character was supposed to be a bum who gets brutally shot and murdered in an alleyway. You didn't even have a line. And you came in here and monologued for 25 minutes and now you're filibustering us? <laughs> Listen, buddy, I think you're going to want me in the role, okay? Oh, yeah. God, there's somebody in the alley. Uh-oh. I hope this doesn't go south. I would sure hope not to die in a bleeding out in an alley. Oh, is that a knife? Watch out. Uh-oh. I'm thinking stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You know, am I getting closer to the character for you? What are we doing? No. So I'll show up to set on Wednesday then, huh? We will not be seeing you Wednesday, but I will be in touch if anything comes up. Stay home Wednesday, please. <laughs> if you are on the set, you will be trespassing and arrested. Let me talk to Scorsese. No. I mean, I think I'm speaking his language, you know what I mean? He's asleep right now.
Wake up, Martin. Come on. I'm this. I'm, I'm your jackpot. I'm your golden goose. Get me, let me in the movie, huh? Don't wake Martin up. A different accent? You you're think you're going to need to go. Should it be a different accent? I think I, I see what you're... I read it all over your face. Yeah, you're going to want a different one. Okay. I mean, I'll be damned if I'm not put straight in this movie. I really think I am the cream of the crop. I am the best actor out in that lobby, and I'm the best damn actor Scorsese's ever going to lay eyes upon. Why are we holding auditions for this role again? Mr. Savage, it's not a speaking role. We wanted you to come in here, lay down, and take these fake bullets like a boss. Now you're doing a country bumpkin kind of thing. I appreciate the versatility, sure. Well, I mean, there's always wriggle room, you know what I mean? I think that could be, like, a spot for me. Like, yeah, it's a non-speaking role, like, in the script. But I think if I'm able to kind of flip the character just a little bit, I'm manipulating the, the way that I do, you know? Maybe I, I squeak out a line or two, and then it kind of yeah. grows from there. Like, I think, uh, I think about the character as a more fluid character, yeah. you know? You know... Your persistence might have actually paid off. We do need a stunt double for a scene where Brad Pitt shrinks himself down and explores the cloaca of a seagull. Is that something you'd be interested in? <laughs> You're telling me you need me to be a mini Brad Pitt and go inside a bird's ass? Yeah. Is that role still? Yeah. That role's still open. <laughs> You're not going to regret this. Yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunity. <laughs> I appreciate it. No problem. Yes. G, what's the next film? Pinocchio. Animated Pinocchio? 1940. All right. Whoa. I believe this was the first animated movie at the Cannes Film Festival to compete for the Palme d'Or. Really? Yeah. Because Peter Pan was 1953. Yeah. Okay. First and then one. the third? Shrek. Shrek. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Almost 50 years later. Man, I have not seen this movie in... I saw it when I was a kid, but like, I don't remember... Yeah. I know the story, but I'm saying I don't remember the movie. He's like a sex toy for an insect cell that likes lying, right? <laughs> Pinocchio. He's like a magical puppet that's a sex toy for an incel that likes to lie. I just thought he was an Italian kid. He's holding the puppet and he's like, yeah, I paid my taxes last year. That's like a family guy bit. I'm pretty sure that's like <laughs> legitimately. I'm pretty sure that is like exactly a family guy cutaway bit. Three, two, one. 88. 83. It is 100%. Nice. Wow. No problems with this movie at all. See, this Nobody's is what they do. got an issue. This is what they do with old shit. I'm sorry, but this movie, there's just no way. I mean, that's what I think about old albums. Old albums just get so much credence when they <laughs> yeah. talk about them. They're like, perfect album. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it came out in 1966. It's perfect. There's a big difference between 66 and 46, though. I mean, that's true. I'm just talking, that's movies versus yeah. whatever. Like, no one's talking about a 40s album, unless it's jazz. And those people are crazy anyway. But yeah. no, no, like, regular schmegular music critic is like, ah, oh, Donk Wilmer, 1922. <laughs> like, that guy was banging pots. Yeah. <laughs> Next movie, Grant. Twilight. The original. Yes. Okay, not a bad movie. I'm not going to lie. I watched that semi-recently. <sighs> Kristen Stewart could not act. No. And the jury's still out on now. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I, I just sound tough. I'm ready to be a vampire. Yeah, she just quivers. Yeah, she's a quiver. That's her thing. She's a quiver. She gets typecast as the quiverer. And this whole film has, like, the Seattle filter on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? The Pacific Northwest filter. Blue. <laughs> Similar to, like, the Mexican filter. Right. When any American film enters Mexico, everything goes, like, bright sepia. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a Tijuana street. <laughs> Same goes for the Pacific Northwest. Oh, yeah. It goes gray and blue, and everyone's skin turns to this. <laughs> yeah. They use the same filter for the Pacific Northwest that they do inside of a hospital <laughs> that is going to turn into a horror scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's sterile and like it looks all like clean and dirty at the same time, but everything's just blue as hell. Uh -huh. Heavy fluorescence. <laughs> yeah. Their skin looks cold and yeah. they all need chapstick. I remember being excited to see this movie as a kid because it had like a an air of eroticism to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my older sister read the book, you know, older kids were reading the books and it seemed horny in a way. Right, right, yeah. And that's what intrigued me to go in. And I didn't really, that didn't pay off. It wasn't that horny of a movie. Lautner's abs? I mean, you're just going to ignore that? Yeah, I, I'm. I know you were Team Edward. But yeah, always was. Well, that's because yeah. you looked more like Edward. Mm -hmm. That's what. So you got to go with the home team. I gotta go with the gotta home team. Got to root for the home <laughs> team. Yeah. Let me add this to the conversation. Go then. right ahead. Do you know Taylor Lautner's wife's name? Missy. Taylor as well. Taylor and Taylor Lautner. <laughs> she became Taylor Lautner. That's awesome. I know. What if I told you that Taylor Lautner had that dog in him? He once devoured 400 babies in the same night. 
a true bloodsucker from birth. <laughs> Honestly, if you get a chance to be immortal and you pick your age and you pick anything under the age of 18, you're a weirdo. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm it sorry. super weird. Yeah, you cannot pick a high school age to stay forever. Nah. Your brain's gonna keep going. All their brains are gonna be underdeveloped. Like it's just, you can't be around a bunch of bozos like no, that. No, see, I wanna be like 77 if I'm immortal. That's not what I would pick. Well, because once I get that infinite wisdom of living so long, people will actually believe me. If a 77 year old tells you some secrets, you're kind of like, oh shit, what's it? You know, that I don't know. <laughs> if I stayed like this size, this shape, this appearance, people aren't buying it. They're like, okay, this guy's smoking hard. You're putting all your eggs in the basket of people believing you when you say wisdom. Well, it'd be nice. I know, but like, there's so many other things. Like if you're 77, you're immortally like a bad <laughs> version of your body that is hurting all the time and you fall asleep in a chair. And yeah, the answer is nice. I mean, it's nice for a day, but. It's like on game day. I suck a little blood and I watch the Browns. Three, two, one. 55. 34. It is 49%. Nice one, It's Russ. a tie game. Tied it back up. Wow. wow. I hear that locomotive coming. Oh, that's not what you're doing. Bing, 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 bing. Six to six. Let's hope the next one's a porno. Grant, what is it? Requiem for a dream. Oh, got a great. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. not great. Wow, well, it has a scene. Yeah. Don't tell me the director. Jared Leto. <laughs> this movie's really good. Yeah, I watched it once when I was in high school uh -huh. with a girl in my parents' basement, and I remember being so inspired by it visually, but in a situation where I couldn't give it my full undivided attention. And so I don't like remember everything about it, but I remember being oh, like, wow. this movie would change my life if I was paying all the way attention to it. Yeah, this like aesthetically would inspire you. Yeah. I'm excited for your rewatch. Yeah, I'm it, gonna rewatch it for sure. It's a quick hitter too, and it's it's insane. It's yeah. like a true fever dream. Oh man, it does some things to me. <laughs> And it does the great arc of like substance abuse where in the beginning it almost, you're almost jealous. You're almost like, damn, I want to be doing drugs with my friends. That right. looks fun. And it takes you to a very, 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 very dark place. Like some of my favorite things do, train spotting. Yep. And I, I know you're going to disagree with it, but euphoria. Yeah, no. You start that show being like, is this okay to make drugs look this fun? Right. And then you end it being like, is it okay to make drugs look this bad? <laughs> you know? yeah. They're not that bad. Rue can't piss? Like, what's <laughs> happening? Yeah. Three, two, one. 96. 81%. 78%. Wow, you were right close, on it. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. What's the audience score on it? 93. Yeah. Okay. One of those movies that I feel like just took like the right amount of risks, but it's always going to keep it from being critically beloved because it's not catering to like the classic movie tropes. Mm -hmm. Like it has that drug arc in it that is kind of classic, but it does those shot mashing and like weird shit is going on. Next movie, Grant. Shutter Island. <laughs> Another one that I am still yet to see. God. I know, everybody talks about, they, they're like, you love thrillers and you love when a movie has a twist. You need to watch Shutter Island because it'll blow your mind and you'll freak out. You'll absolutely freak out. It'll change the trajectory of your life. You'll start mm -hmm. spiraling. I'll be the one to differ a little bit. I don't know if you'd, you'd love this movie. Really? It's like a great psychological thriller with a twist. Right. That we all know. But those second, third subversive layers, I don't know if they really cater to your tastes. It <laughs> does have Mark Ruffalo in it. Oh, I love him. What a support. Love that guy. He is like the best running back that Peyton Manning ever had. He's like Edron James. Yeah, Edron James. I was gonna say he's exactly like an Edron James type character. Yeah, I mean, it's just beautiful the way he plays the two. I mean, Zodiac. Come on! Prime example. Come Jake on. Gyllenhaal wouldn't be Jake Gyllenhaal in that movie if he didn't have a handsome Mark Ruffalo there to paint the picture. God, he's so good. Shout out Ruffalo. Shout out to Mark Ruffalo. You are welcome on the show anytime you want. Sorry we scrapped the first episode. <laughs> just a lot of profanity. Is this a David Fincher? Martin Scorsese. Oh, Scorsese. Who was just sitting here earlier. Shutter Island is Martin Scorsese? <laughs> In my head, no joke, and I know this is whatever, I thought it was an M. Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> Everybody's always talking about the fucking twist. Nobody ever talks about twists in movies unless it's M. Night Shyamalan. I've only seen, like, Split. Have like, you seen The Village? No. That's, like, the only good one by him. I, oh, like, I like Split. Sixth Sense. Oh, I've seen that. It's, like, Sixth Sense, The Village, Split's all right. Yeah, Sixth Sense just didn't make any sense. But it is, like, the most fun to watch. Yeah, I was just pissed off because there's so many senses he forgot about. Or, like, love and emotion and stuff? No, like balance. Yeah, your equilibrium. Your 
spatial awareness kind of deal. Spatial awareness, yeah. yeah. What mean, about the tip of your penis? I mean, it's very sensitive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that one in there? It's not a sense, though. Oh, yeah, it is. I mean, no. It's, it's like the sense, in my opinion. <laughs> right, it's but... Like number one for me. Oh, I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I call that my little buzz ball. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, but it's like a feet. It's like still feeling. Oh, I thought you were going to say feet. That was number two for me. Feet? Oh, if I get my bottom of my foot tickled yeah. while someone's serving my tip. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like a stray cat in that bitch, the way I start humming and hawing. <laughs> right. That kind of stuff. If I get a goose feather on the bottom of my foot and you're doing a vortex motion with your tongue on my tip, <laughs> I'm going to pop like a kettle. <laughs> Three, two, one. 87? 79. 68%. Wow. Okay. Here's my sense, if you really want it. My two cents. It is overhyped. I've rewatched this movie at least three times, maybe even four, because it exploded when it came onto scenes. Yeah. It doesn't hold up. The twist isn't that fun on rewatch, which I know it's not necessarily supposed to be. I don't know. It misses on some marks that I feel like it got credit for when it first came out. I feel like that is the way that it goes with movies with twists. If you know what the twist is yeah. and you're rewatching, you're paying attention to all of the other things in the movie that you're allowed to to get away with when people don't know what's going to happen. I will counter with a movie like Inception, which came on the scene so hot and holds up and the twist is like, because Shutter Island is in that same sense. It's kind of up for grabs, you know? It doesn't give you the answer. Right. And Inception still rocks. I've seen 20 minutes of Inception. Oh, another good one. Joseph Gordon-Levitt. What a hunk. Oh my God. He's like a sexier Justin Long and I hate to say that next to you. He's ugly as shit. He's no. actually a fugly, fugly, ugly piece of shit. Well, watch Don John and watch a master for two hours and then get back to me. But he's fugly. <laughs> it's not. His face is, it looks like wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> Something's wrong with it. <laughs> you got love for Justin Long, and I'm not coming at his fuckly ass. Here's the deal with Justin, though. Justin is the average man's man. JGL he has plays been, a hottie. He's been praised as the hottie. Yeah, he plays and a when hottie. you put him in the hottie category, I'm going to judge him on that scale. That's fair. That's Justin fair. Long's never had to step onto that scale. He's the unassuming, like, yeah. This guy's with Blake Lively? Like, that's what you're supposed to do with Justin Long. You're supposed to be like, wow, you know, good, good, for him. good guys really do sometimes, right. they do win. So now you're saying JGL can't be a good guy? I'm not saying that they, at all. he's been unfairly thrown into the hottie category? I mean, sure, there's a, there's a conversation to be had about whether he's been sexualized, whether yeah. he's been, you know, it's it's tough, but I'm just saying, like, to me, he doesn't have as much going on as yeah. Justin has. That's fair. All right, Grant, what's that next movie? Scream. Oh, yeah. I thought that was a painting. Man, I do not know anything about movies. I've seen like three of the movies on here today, and it's like Waterboy and Grown Ups. Like, <laughs> it's just a bummer, dude. Like, I'm having fun though, don't get me wrong. Who's the guy, the motherfucker and Scooby Doo that people say I look like? Matthew Lillard. Scream stars Matthew Lillard. Oh, it does. As a douchebag. Like the, like a the, total the item? Dickhead. Like no. The hygienic item? Oh, he's oh. like a dickhead. Oh, okay, cool. It's pretty awesome. This movie, I feel like, due to its sequels and stuff, kind of gets swept under the rug, but this is like top tier cinema. When did it come out? 1996. Oh, like see, I was thinking of this. For some reason, I was like, this is an old ass movie. Oh, no. I don't, must not know what we're even talking about. This is like everybody, like everyone in the high school depiction looks like new metal, like Limp Biscuit fans. They have like frosted tips and shit. And it's like, yes, it's classic thriller, but it's also like a social commentary thing going on. Like, yeah. They're very into the killer. And like those moods and the way it's entangled is like very, very cool. I love the new metal aesthetic. I'm definitely down to watch a movie <laughs> like that. I've got a lot of movies to watch. If you're young and it's Halloween, season and you're looking for a spooky movie and you haven't seen the original Scream, it's got the big old okay for me. And if you're young and you smoke marijuana, you will probably never find a job. <laughs> <laughs> if you do have a job, you'll most likely be fired. <laughs> If you're enrolled in school, you'll most likely fail out. Everyone can smell the weed on your clothes. <laughs> yep. Your eyes are red. Everyone yep. around you knows you're high. <laughs> yep, they do. And this is permanent. It's never going to stop. <laughs> Scream, are we having fun yet? Three, two, one. 71. 70. It is 79%. Nice. Wow, we did a real Price is Right situation. Yeah. Yeah. An accidental Bob Barker. The yeah. audience score was also 79%. Interesting. Whoa, a, a true daily double. Wow, 79 and 79. So the audience and the critics... That's so different after all. <laughs> by the way, all of the movies for today's game were picked by our friend Sam Aarons, whose letterbox is linked in the description. Follow him on Letterboxd. Thanks, Sam. Grant, what's the next movie? 
Buffalo 66. Yes, okay. I knew this would be in here. Vincent Gallo, art film. One of the most unsettling movies I've yeah. ever seen, but also like you can kind of just disagree with the entire mood and plot of that movie and see it all as like scumbaggery. Yeah. But also fall in love with the aesthetic of the movie to the point where you can build your entire personality off of it. <laughs> yes, I know people. It's in the same cult community as like Gummo. You know what I mean? Where you're like, this shit's fucking weird and it makes me feel nasty and you have a certain sect of the population that rubs their tops off to that kind of shit. And what an ending scene. Holy shit, if you've never seen this, it's worth it just for the last 10 minutes because it's like... Three, two, one. 82. I went with 66. It is 76. Mm. It is tied. It's crazy eights. It's crazy eights. Wow. I had to guess 66. G, serve us up another film. Point Break. What's that? Action movie with Keanu Reeves. I think this is like a three and a half hour long, like three and a half hours long, you're going to have to take a break at a few points. Um, there is a gross point break, which is a suburb of Detroit. And I think it's John Cusack. He goes to like a high school reunion and he's got to solve a murder or something. So is point break like a term that people <laughs> use? It just know. sounds like action movie words just kind of like <laughs> slammed together. You know what I mean? Three, two, one. 50. 64. 70%. Ah, see, That's I just close. don't know anything. I just went straight down the middle. Don't know a dang thing about action movies. I'll tell yeah. you that. I have seen Die Hard recently. Really? Yeah, I saw it for the first time this Christmas. <laughs> oh, interesting. Funny enough, though, I saw Live Free or Die Hard mm -hmm. because guess who it stars? Justin Long? Yes. Justin Long and Bruce Willis and whoever plays Bruce Willis's daughter. I think I watched Die Hard for the first time, too, like at length, maybe last year, and I was like, Oh, yeah, I thought it sucked. Yeah, I was like, this what you all on about? I thought it was funny that Alan Rickman was the villain in yeah. it because I was like, oh, that's Snape. Yeah. And that was just, that was a good moment for me mm -hmm. to be like, that's Snape. Point at TV and go, that's Snape. Yeah, that's Snape! <laughs> that's Snape, Mom. He played Snape. And yeah. she's like, I know. I knew who he was before he was Snape. Good job, Go honey. back to sleep, honey. <laughs> Next movie, Grant. Harris, Texas. Oh. oh. Good band. <laughs> I mean, this is in my top five, I think. Harris, Texas. Dallas, Texas. Katy, Texas. I've never seen it, obviously. Isn't this one kind of an art film? <laughs> the parallels here between this and Buffalo 66 are crazy. Oh, okay. I'm a sucker for anything set in West Texas. That's like the scariest place in the world to me. Like that also comes with its own filter. Yeah. Although it's close to Mexico, it doesn't get the sepia treatment. Not all the way. No, it'll be like the widest shot of nothing but telephone wires and a guy like, you can hear the gravel. Every little sound is like a pin dropping, you know? Also, every home seems to have barbed wire. Yeah. Ev all over it. And everyone knows like the area by just the plots of land. Yeah. They're like, ah, that's Jimenez's farm. <laughs> and they'll drive like 15 miles up the road. <laughs> ah, that's Donaldson's ranch. Been there for a quarter century. Old man doesn't leave his trailer. Good luck talking to him. <laughs> Some people say he lost his wits 10 years ago. Some people say 20 years ago. <laughs> I don't think he's going to be any help getting to the bottom of this. Three, two, one. 80%. 85. Is 94%. My gosh, they really, really liked this one more. <laughs> Rightfully so. Is it the last one? Yeah. That means, oh, I can you tie have, it. You have if to I can get, get it exactly spot on. right. <laughs> Is it the SpongeBob SquarePants movie? It's not the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. I can tell by the way you're looking at me. <laughs> um, I get three more guesses of what the movie is. Nope, you don't. It doesn't matter. It's not for points. It's just for fun. Why are you guessing what the fun. movie is? Guessing is fun. I'm going to guess Over the Hedge. Nope. She Hulk. No. <laughs> Fuck. Is that, even, is that even out yet? Oh, it's a show? show? I don't know. Show's what I know. What is it, Grant? <laughs> Boogie Nights. Whoa. Whoa. Recently reviewed on my Letterboxd, huge film guy. And it's the closest I've ever come to tilting the never wavering Ferris Bueller's big day off. This is a good argument for the standard deviation thing because the everything else Mark Wahlberg's been in sucks. Oh, yeah. And he's got a big raunchy cock in this one. And this movie's <laughs> sweet. Long, though. Boy, is it <laughs> long. An amazing soundtrack. Almost interrupting soundtrack. A conversation ends and they're like, boom, give you a 60s song. Someone walks out of a room, boom, you get in a car, boom, song after song after song after song in this. It's an insane soundtrack. Such an awesome movie, though, about porn and coke. Yeah, a lot of Cope. You need it on the nose, Riley. I know. Boogie nights. Three, two, one. 77. 88. 
93. Mm. That seals it. Hey, you did much better than the last game, I will say. Thank you. Thank you. I did. I put. I tried to put up a fight this time. You yeah. Know? Yeah, 11 to 8. Final score. Rotten Tomatoes. Graydon's our resident film buff. Either way, I had fun playing the game. If you want us to do it again, send over some movies to DJ Grant. But these were all picked by Sam Aarons. His letterbox is linked in the description. Follow him on Letterbox right now, please. Thank you, Sam. But let us know what else you want us to do on this channel. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe. Also, I did not say at the beginning. And Graydon, please leave these wonderful moviegoers with some advice to leave or live their lives by. Two eggs and a hatchet will keep you safe from any shrimp basket. This has been High Mind Unlimited. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll see you in the next one. Cut! <laughs> I see you, see you. What movie do you hope's in here? Herbie Fully Loaded. Would love to see a Herbie appearance. I would as well. Every time I watch Herbie, I'm fully loaded and I end up with my hand on my cock. <laughs> Herbie hand cock. That's the joke there. <laughs> Pretty good. Not a bad one. Post credits, I'm thinking. I'm thinking yeah. post credits. You're thinking post credits for I'm that? I'm thinking post credits, Herbie Hancock joke. It's like a horny Will Smith as a car, narrated by Lindsay Lohan and music supplied by jazz legend Herbie Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> Where does Will Smith fit into this? Hancock. Oh, Hancock. <laughs> see? Wow. Herbie fully loaded Hancock. That's, I love it. I love, yeah. I absolutely love it. I did see Hancock in theaters with a girl that I was dating and we made out through the whole movie. I do not know what happens in that. <laughs> I'm not joking. That's good. That was me with August Rush. Oh, August Rush. August Rush, <laughs> yep. the violin kid. He would have been so big on TikTok. August <laughs> oh, Rush. Fuck. What a terrible movie. <laughs> they should have made like a movie like that about Mason Ramsey. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would have been cool. Just like, you know, prodigies of their craft. August Rush just like made up a way of playing guitar that isn't real. He plays that bitch like a bongo. <laughs> and everybody's like, ah! <laughs> Music's changed forever. It's like, <laughs> you heard about the reboot that they're doing of this one, though, the live action reboot? I think so. You're not lying, right? Yeah, it stars Jeff Dunham. Eh, guess I can't help but thinking like the average cocksucker's walking into the movie with a big old bucket of popcorn.